Our story starts a few years ago at a very familiar place. The industry's best are once again gathered for the Reedy Race at the world famous OCRC Raceway. This is a short eight months before the IFMAR Worlds, which were held in Japan that year. The IFMAR 10 scale off road worlds have a long history dating back to the 80s. Back then, the sport was dominated by one man, Masami Hirosaka. He piled up 14 IFMAR titles, seven of them in 10 scale off road. Everything about the sport has changed since then, including the tracks. It'll definitely be, uh, be different. It's kind of disappointing. I've always thought off-road should be on dirt, but I mean, it worked out okay in Italy. It was really consistent. So um, I think whatever they decide, We'll have, to, we'll have to deal with it. Personally, I have never had run on carpet or Astro. We don't have any tracks like that back home. But, I mean, a lot of people probably wouldn't class it as off-road racing, but I guess it's up to the people who are in charge. So it is what it is, and if I can make it to the Worlds, it'd be awesome. I'll still run on carpet, I don't mind. So. Uh, I think it's a really big fail on IFMAR's part. It's not... Um, that's not off-road racing, in my opinion, just because you throw some, if you just threw some jumps right on this concrete floor right here, that's not racing. That's not off-road racing. Gitabi is such an iconic place with such an iconic dirt track. So uh, a lot of people are looking forward to that, including me. So yeah, it's pre pretty disappointing. I could understand doing a Worlds on AstroTurf in a place like England or someplace that always races on it, but the fact that we're going to a facility that has an amazing dirt track to just put AstroTurf on it is very disappointing. So it makes no sense why you'd go to a really, really cool off-road facility that most people would want to eventually get to. It's like kind of like a bucket list racing facility, and they choose to go race on their touring car track for the 10-scale worlds. The Yatabi Arena truly is one of the most famous racing facilities in the world. Like Ryan and Dustin said, it's an iconic facility, a bucket list facility. This would be the second Worlds hosted here. So much in the industry has changed since 1995. Matt Francis's winning two-wheel drive buggy is hardly recognizable when compared with modern day two-wheel drive platforms. Driving style is also different because uh, before, Five minutes, eight minutes to run, very difficult because the battery was not really good. But now, LiPo battery, enough power, enough for run time, so easy to uh, run five or eight minutes. So no need to economy drive. In the two-wheel drive class, a three-way battle has ensued between incumbent champion Jared Tebow, Ryan Cavallari, and a very young Spencer Rivkin. Rivkin would take the two-wheel drive title in the four-wheel drive class. It would be touring car specialist Bruno Coelho taking the win. Two years later, and it's time for another 10-scale Worlds. This time, they will be held in Southern China. Even with its vast population, the RC scene here in China does not have a proportional following. Regardless, Xiao Min was selected to host the Worlds, and the organizers get these Worlds started off on the right foot. The host hotel is amazing. Probably one of the better places I've stayed, I'd say, for a World Championship, so. I mean, most of the time, they kind of put us in hotels that are pretty easy to get to, to the track. Um, you know, usually they have a shuttle and everything. I haven't really been to a Worlds, so it's been difficult to get around, really, but, um, yeah, this place is pretty legit. They've set, up, set us up pretty nicely, so yeah, it's good. This hotel is nice. Look at it. It's beautiful. Yeah, this should be in Vegas. I thought we were in Vegas. Oh, we're on the other side of the planet. Drivers from 24 countries are headed for China to compete for two of IFMAR's most prestigious titles, many of which have traveled for 24 or more hours to get here. 30 hours. 
about 30 hours from home to to the destination. It's the longest I've ever flown. And of course I'm flying by myself. I think he's excited to get going with the worlds. He's been running every day I think for the last 20 whatever days straight. So he's uh, ready to get going in the worlds and get home. They're both anxious to get home. While Ty and Gord are anxious to get home, most of us are just anxious to get to China. Each participating block have sent their best drivers, most of them earning their spots by way of national performances. The biggest names in the sport are about ready to compete for the two IFMAR titles up for grabs this week. That's right, these count as two separate titles. In fact, the 10 scale worlds are even treated as two separate events held back to back over the next eight days. But not every participant is a paid driver with 100% travel. At uh, last year's Nats and ended up getting my invite letter and uh, posted it online. Um, I had no intentions of coming. I, there's no, absolutely no way with my situation to be able to afford a trip like this. And uh, basically posted online just to say, you know, I, I accomplished a goal that I had in racing is to just qualify for a world championships. Zeke, who was initially content to simply qualify for the worlds, decided to take a different approach to attending the event. He set up a GoFundMe campaign. Probably within a week, we hit $3,000. It came very real that it was something that was probably going to happen. Zeke isn't your average racer, though, and not just because he's faster than most people who participate in this sport. So I was actually born this way. I believe it's called amniotic band syndrome, and essentially it's my mom's womb is too small. And I got tangled when I was little, and it basically cut the blood circulation off to my arms and a couple of toes. It, it's funny, people wonder how I drive, or how I race an RC car, or how I wrench. Those are the easy things. It's, it's the little things like going to the grocery store and realizing the thing you need is on the top shelf. While he is fiercely competitive, Zeke realizes he's probably not going to win either event here in Xiaomen. Very few people get to win at these events. And so if you go with a mindset of having fun and enjoying yourself, then you can regardless of where you're finishing. While it's hard for people to understand this, even though these are considered toy cars to some, and there is a high degree of job satisfaction for 20 or so career drivers participating in these worlds, they are not here to have fun. There is a job at hand, and the stakes are about as high as they get. In the next eight days, we will find out who the new 10 scale world champions will be.
we're on the bus in Xiamen, China, and we're headed over to the track for check-in day, the 2017 Ithamar World Championships. So we got loaded up, we got a bunch of guys here from different teams, and we got, I think, three buses taking everybody to the track. Jerry Tebow is first in line. Jerry Tebow is not on the first bus. So I don't know exactly what happened there, but yeah, he's probably not happy. I did not get the win. Yeah, I know. I got out there pretty early, but it was uh, it was a good fight. I could have made that first bus, but you gotta pick your battles. Hey, Ronnie. Hey. Yeah, you had your phone. I got my phone. Got your phone? Yes, sir. You got your wallet? Come on. No. No. The racers get off the shuttle bus and have now officially arrived at the 2017 OGO Worlds. It's just an off day, yeah. We're just uh, I'm gonna do some shocks, get some tires done, walk around, talk to everybody, waste a bunch of time, and then go back to the hotel, I guess. The Testmans and the rest of the X-ray team don't arrive until late in the afternoon. I'm sure there's pictures floating around of me with my mouth hanging open, drooled, running out somewhere. 38 hours. And I won't be sleeping for a while yet. Everybody's here, you know, and they're all they're all kind of open-minded and I think uh, looking forward to the challenge because it's going to be a challenge. I think the, the surface and, and everything like that that they've never been on, no practice, no nothing. This is going to be a pretty, maybe the most neutral world championships, you know, anybody's ever been at. So it's it's definitely going to bring the, the, well, the cream to the top or whatever the cliche is they say. It'll be good. It's awesome. This is an awesome facility. Um, everything is top notch. I mean, there, I'm pretty sure there's more crew members than there's actual drivers. So you don't really get that many places you go. Everything's very organized. Everyone's very nice and uh, awesome so far. The track looks amazing. Um, but there's definitely some sugar on it. <laughs> some? Actually, the track was first glued together somehow and then molasses was sprayed onto the surface. The result is a track surface that many of the North American racers should be used to. There's definitely a sense of familiarity between this track and the sugar tracks that used to be prevalent in the United States just a few short years ago. Like the Outdoor Cactus Classic and the 2013 Worlds track in Chico. pretty similar to the Chico Worlds in terms of size, sugar, everything like that. Like this layout, the track at the Chico Worlds was a large, high-speed layout. Not at all your typical 10-scale track. This three-circle facility is amazing with you know biggest driver stand you ever seen in the world and you know when you get this caliber of guys no matter what it is it's a world championship it's gonna be pretty awesome so it's uh, I'm pretty honored to be able to call another one it's gonna be great so where are you gonna stand it's such a big well I've stand. kind of went from the right to the left so I think I know, we have like a half mile I would say I'm gonna be on this side of the pole like I like a half to see that you room. can see the chicane kind of all the tight sections uh, coming at you so and then as well this off camera kind of see it a little better. I mean, it doesn't really probably make much of a difference, but just really driver preference. Oh, really? Okay, Done national. With little else to do, drivers spend a lot of time walking the well, track. Well, walking on it now, it's super hard packed. Uh, it smells like sugar, so it's gonna be pretty grippy. <laughs> but um, it's a little bumpier than I think it looks on the pitches, but I mean, we're not gonna really know until we get out there with cars, so. I think it's good. I think it's going to be good the whole time. If it rains, it might put a little bit of a monkey wrench in, into uh, the whole race, but that's what uh, that's why we're all great racers, and we know we should have experience on what we need to do to be running at the top, and it's going to be fun. It looks awesome. It's definitely a lot larger than what I'm used to seeing the boys run on. I think we should always run 10 scale on a track that's big. But uh, I think it should be really good. We're excited. I would say this is like probably an ideal 10 scale size track, but nowadays it's pretty hard to make them this size, especially because the majority of stuff is indoor. But yeah, it looks really good. Given the uncanny similarities to the Chico Worlds, 
Would this be an advantage for Jared, who wasn't the fastest driver at those worlds, but rather the most consistent? One major difference between these worlds and 2013 is the tire selection. The Spec Tire in 13 was a much harder Proline X2 compound, whereas these worlds will be run on Sweep's Super Soft compound. They're probably not going to be ideal, but like I said, everyone's on the same thing. So it's going to come down to a lot of setup and getting the right front tire to balance it. In two-wheel drive, only rear tires are spec. For four-wheel, the spec tires will be mounted on all four corners. From what our testing, I mean, it was like a one-run tire. So we'll kind of, we'll see what happens. With these tires essentially being disposable, drivers spend most of the check-in days mounting countless sets of tires Too up. Too many tires. At least 11 sets for uh, official tires and then plus free practice uh, six times, I think. So 17, basically 17 for maximum for each class. So maximum 34, I think, which is way too much for just for one week, you know. The wear won't be the only issue with the selected spec tire. So what we gotta try to do is match Foam. So these two are quite a bit different, so we'll go through all our foams first and try to match, get similar sizes in the same sets of rims and keep everything organized to try to keep some consistency. After the drivers have had their fill of walking the track and gluing thousands of tires, it's back onto the shuttle for the short drive back to the hotel and for many, some much needed sleep. Others head out to explore Chow Min. The next day will be a very important day. We will see buggies on the track for the first time at these worlds. Finish. You only take your tire, we only take your tires, just only the rings. If you glue them, I will not take them. 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 We, we might we might die. I think he's a killer. Yeah. Yeah. I think he's he's gonna hang some. While Max Lim's rather large personality may have rubbed some the wrong way, he was exactly what was needed to keep the program running smoothly. And he would be put to the test over the course of the week. Max is fortunate to have been surrounded by some of the best in the industry. Scotty Ernst, one of the truly great race announcers of our day, will be on the mic for the next seven days. Masami Hirosaka, the winningest driver ever, will be acting as the deputy race director, and with his years of experience, he's the perfect man for the job. For 40 years. I started RC car racing when I was seven years old, so now 47. Masami makes good use of his social media following, which is the largest in the industry. Because, uh, one Facebook, only uh, I can make 5,000 friends. So Max, and this is Max, and this is Max, Max. This is a still okay, new one. And this is a Facebook page, so we don't have friends. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So it takes a long time to uh, upload. A couple days ago, Tanner Denny mentioned the size of the track crew. He really wasn't kidding. There are a host of workers who do everything from posting results to doing social media for the Three Circles facility. Turn marshals, who are ready for anything, were even supplied on both practice days. So, uh, yeah, these little cars can cause some damage to the end of the straight. <laughs> <laughs> 
The full If Mark crew is also on deck to ensure that everything is running smoothly, including Dallas Matheson, whose health was a matter of question leading up to the Worlds. Many doubted that he would even make the trip, but Dallas was here and actively participating in every aspect of these Worlds. The track is finally open. Lower heats are up first. The pros watch intently, surveying the track and seeing where the drivers in these early heats struggle. One of the drivers that the pros had the pleasure to watch was Zeke. He is one of the lucky drivers who ended up in a very early heat. Car's pretty good. Uh, the triple double 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 section's pretty tough. You go through it one time and it's really easy, and then you miss it by like a car or two on the lip, and it's like you've never been through that section before. As expected, the sweep tires were coming off absolutely obliterated. The key in the two wheel drive class will be finding a front tire that complements the rear tire and balances out the handling. Film cannot properly articulate how difficult this track really is. Between the high grip, the super soft and inconsistent spec tires, coupled with the unparalleled speed of this layout, these worlds would be the most difficult tests that the drivers have faced in the last 10 years, possibly ever. While it's expected that the Joes crash quite frequently on layouts like these, what is not expected is to see the best of the best tumbling down the track. As with many IFMAR events, more often than not, the titles are won by drivers that are not necessarily well known to the masses. Outside of Europe, Bruno Coelho, the incumbent four-wheel drive champ, was a relatively unknown driver in the off-road scene. Normally, as everybody knows, I don't drive so, so good two-wheel drive and even worse on third. So basically, it's just four or five races a year off-road. Considering how little he drives off-road, the fact that he was leading the free practice segment in two-wheel drive was a true testament to his skill levels. I'm mostly touring car, uh, touring car, 110. This is the arena that Bruno feels the most comfortable in. It is here that he is also much more widely known to dominate. Regardless, Portugal's lone entry here in China had just shown the world that he was yet again a contender and not just in the four-wheel drive class this time. Controlled practice wouldn't go quite as well for him, but he would still seed into the top five. It was Mikhail Orlowski who came out of controlled practice as the driver to beat. Even though it was four days later, and in fact, the two-wheel drive champion was just crowned last night Four-wheel drive practice played out similarly to two-wheel. Bruno again did very well in free practice, emerging as the driver to beat. Just as he did in the two-wheel practice, he would once again drop off in the seating rounds. On both these first practice days, names we are used to hearing repeatedly at event after event were silenced. Names like Tessman, Mayfield, Tebow, Cavalieri, still would not be announced Very good. as leaders. Of course. The second one not so good because I broke, but in the first uh, control practice, my car was amazing. Your Neumann, who was a privateer at these worlds, would be top seed. You, know, you look at it, you, with, with the top guys in the world, top 0.001% of our hobby, struggling to do five minutes. It's impossible. Nobody has done five minutes in all the practice runs. Nobody has done it without a mistake, you know? And it's, it's just, uh, I know the viewers at home, they look at the track and they're like, oh wow, easy jumps and stuff like that. Until you've been there and you see all the little bumps and, and things like that. And when you watch the videos, you'll see it, you know. The jumps are just missing that top one inch to just give it enough lift to clear them, you know. So there's a sweet spot, the, the section, the first double-double in the back. The first meter has got a nice little kick to it. If you go outside and everything, it's so hard to clear it. So there's a sweet spot to all the jumps. You just got to hit them right. And even, a, even the best guys can't do it for five minutes. So the mains are going to be absolutely thrilling because 
there's nobody going to check out. Uh, the truck is, uh, I mean, it's bumpy, but I mean, it's off-road. He, he cannot find one thing that is he's completely planned. And uh, for this, you drive on-road, I think. So I think the truck is very good and uh, very difficult. So that's why it's a world. So we are not here to to have to have no jumps and the straight track. So I think it's pretty pretty difficult as one world world has to. So yeah, I think it's very very good. This isn't really a race in my opinion. I mean, the track isn't raceable, so you're not, I don't see how this is how you determine a world champion, but um, it is what it is. We are 100% racing the track. There's not a single moment where you're gonna be able to actually race the next guy, so. But, you know, I guess everybody says it's the same for everybody, but it, you know, I wish that, I wish that if Mark could figure it out and actually talk to us and see what we wanted to race on and where we wanted to go race, because this to me is not acceptable for a world championship. Most of us, everybody agrees, but nobody else is gonna say it, so. Um, but we got, you know, seven more days. Just gotta do the best I can. Everybody's just gotta do the best they can. And, uh, you know, I think this is why the world championships don't hold as much value as they used to, because it's, you come to these events and you're not racing the next guy. You're racing the crazy conditions or the, crazy circumstances that happen so it is what it is but my car was decent um, the last round that round I made a couple more changes it wasn't as good um, so I'll just go back and see what tomorrow does. Max covering all his bases has the track covered each night as a precautionary measure the next two days will be crucial ones qualifying begins Everything that happened in two-wheel drive practice has just been washed away, literally. Uh, maybe uh, we have meeting and uh, decide maybe uh, more than 50% don't want to race. And also, uh, I guess uh, time marshal is very dangerous, so I can't race, I think. I think it changes it up for everybody. So that's, uh, that's what we do. It's not like uh, we haven't dealt with this stuff before. It'll, uh, it'll be fun. Who knows, that's, you know, the grip's probably gonna be a lot less, but it might actually be the right tires for this because they're so soft. So, yeah, I mean, we're all on the same track, so it is what it is. We need a nice rain day here. I wanna spend another day here in China. Why not? What am I gonna do at home? Mow my lawn and wash my car? Yeah, it's a shame we got rain today, but it is lightening up. But I don't know. I can't see. I have to be optimistic, and I hope for the racers that we get on the track. But man, it's going to be an undertaking to sop up all this water and then to try to get the track conditions. And then they're they're talking about should they have a practice run? Or they they scrapped the control practice today, but you know. I'm, I'm a racer too, so you know I think the guy should at least get a couple laps on the track, you know, a two minute stint or something, because the track is going to be so different today. So I don't know. That's all we can hope for, I guess, right? Hopefully the rain stops and everything. It's our only, it's our only pause this week, and everything goes on. But uh, I hope we get on the track. Today. One thing is certain: the two-wheel drive segment has just been rebooted. How would this affect the drivers and teams that had success in the practice sessions? And how would the tires that were completely inconsistent in practice handle these brand new conditions? Waiting for sun. What we heard, um, 
the town yesterday launched about 32 rockets up in the sky to make it rain. To make it rain. I thought the town was sponsored this event, but I'm not sure. <laughs> Now, China is using artillery to fight its drought. Weather officials fired rockets and shells filled with cloud seeding chemicals into the sky. Chinese authorities hope to create a little bit of rain. Irrigation systems are poor, so over the weekend, China brought out the big guns. Literally, rockets loaded with cloud seeding chemicals fired those chemicals into the clouds to make it rain. But those clouds are thin and moving out of the drought-stricken area, so that's only going to be a short-term fix. Fake news or not, the simple fact of the matter is that the track is going to be very different today than that of the practice rounds. Uh, track is safe, it's covered. Uh, we will not uncover it until it's totally stopped. Until the rain is totally stopped. Uh, the track will be dry. Uh, we shall see what happens after we uncover it. But uh, safe to say that's not going to happen uh, within the last two hours. Then, of course, in my opinion, I'll say the qualifying has to be run on dry track first. I'll try to ensure my best the track is dry before we start the qualifying. And there will be a chance of pushing everything backwards, maybe up to 6, 7 o'clock. That means we'll have to rely on back on the lights again. After the team manager's meeting and continued rain, the planned two rounds of seating practice have been cancelled. They were replaced by a single round of free practice. This will give the drivers the opportunity to run on the rebooted track without it affecting their seating position. If there is any more rain, however, the event could be in serious jeopardy. We have discussed to, uh, to use one thing, uh, wait, but we're not sure yet. Uh, let's see. It would be very, very hard to squeeze in the event, the total event, if we don't use one thing. So. Just after 10 a.m., the tarps that did their job, for the most part, are carefully pulled off the track. Every single setup can be thrown out the window now. Under the careful direction of Masami, the track crew continues to dry the surface as best they can. After a couple hours of blowing the track off, it is open to the drivers to walk the track. Uh, Masami's out testing the track after, um, after the rain delay, and we'll see how it is. Oh, Scotty's got the radio now. Masami has deemed the track as competition ready, and three rounds of qualifying start just before noon. This would mean that the final round of qualifying today would be run under the lights. While the track has changed dramatically, one constant remains. The drivers are still racing the track more than each other. Three major errors hold David Ronafalk, the reigning Nitro Buggy World Champion, back but much to his surprise, only to fourth spot. This meant that he wasn't the only one crashing. I don't feel fast, but I made uh, three mistakes, I think, uh, that I flipped, and uh, it was like five seconds overall. So when, when, he, when Scotty said I was third, I was kind of surprised. I was, I was like, oh, it's possible I'm third. Like Ronafalk, Bruno finished higher than he expected. He would take little comfort in a top three at this early stage. It's uh, a lot different for sure because I, I cannot even hit the throttle and uh, it's not grip anymore the track so I, we lost a lot of grip. Um, I changed a lot the car for this round to make more grip on the car and it's still not, uh, not enough so we need to work more around. Ryan Cavallari, who was somewhat unimpressive in the practice sessions, proved why he is a three-time off-road world champion. He had TQ all but in the bag, only losing it on the final lap. I was actually really surprised in warm-up because I was going to change my car after practice and I ended up 
not changing it and it actually felt better. So I'm actually happy with how it felt. So um, yeah, I mean the whole entire run was pretty flawless until my last lap, but now I just need to obviously focus for that whole entire run. Mikhail Orlowski, top seed after controlled practice, was the surprise TQ in the first round. It's difficult. Uh, it, it's, it's, you're always on the edge. Uh, you don't really feel when your car will slide, when your car will spin. So it's really difficult to drive. Um, but we are professionals, so... As daylight slowly turns to dusk, the second round of qualifying begins. Kyle McBride, known more for his abilities with an eight-scale buggy, has proven that he belongs here at the Worlds. His run, not at all fast, was smooth and consistent, landing him in the fourth overall position, proving that he's heading in the right direction. With the high grip, I, I, I kind of feel like I'm not, I mean, I don't have any sugar track at home. Um, I got a small indoor track, so it's a little different for me running on such high by I'm not really, I'd say I'm probably not the best on that sort of surface, but um, yeah, I was struggling a little bit just to get my car comfortable uh, in the beginning. But you know, it's rained, the track's changed, um, it's getting a little looser, and I, I seem to drive better when it's looser than an eight scale guy. At the Japan Worlds, Kyle failed to qualify into the AAA mains. This is not something he wants to repeat here in China. I ended up in the, I was in the B main for two wheel drive, so it was my first time running on Astro which was interesting to say the least, but it was fun as well. That was my first experience, but um, yeah, it, I, I want to make it in the main this time, you know. Um, you can't bump up in these in this uh, style racing, so yeah, you're in the top 10 or you're not, so I'm going for it. Another driver that struggled mightily in the high grip, dry conditions of practice was Lee Martin. Uh, you know, seating wasn't, it actually wasn't too bad. I just didn't do my best laps together. Um, so yeah, that didn't give me the best seed, but I actually don't think it's been a bad thing. Um, you know, the top heat's been fast and frantic, and with it, it's brought a lot of mistakes. So uh, I'm actually not minding being in the, in the B heat and just being able to run on my own and run pretty clean. Here in the second round, though, he was having an amazing run. He was on a TQ pace until a late race crash. He would settle for second. Also having issues this round is Bruno. He and Cavallari swapped the TQ spots several times. Quelo's pace was just a bit faster. It frustrated Bruno that Cavallari was slowing his pace and wasn't letting him pass. A huge mistake in the critical double section would cost him the lead and the precious TQ. It would instead go to Cavallari. Bruno was frustrated at the lack of a call. Cav was now on everyone's radar as a contender. Cavalier is starting to worry me. He was kind of the sleeper in seating, uh, but he's put in a first and a second, so he's gonna to be tough to beat, I think, um, just because of the experience and how he just drives around the track without really worrying about anything until it matters. Um, just kind of puts laps in, and then on this track, that's what you need to do. Uh, we made some changes. I think it was better, but still looks like it's pretty sketchy out there. Like, it's pretty much survival. Stay on your wheels and hope for the best. Like, guys crashing in front of you or something like that. I mean, it can ruin a race. Marshall throw you down in front of someone or someone throw a car in front of you. It's just really tough, really tough out there. It was hard when it was high grip, but it's a lot harder now that it's low grip. The final round of the day would be run under the lights, which were dismal to say the very least. The fast European drivers like Orlowski and Quelo, who are not accustomed to so few lights, struggled. Round one TQ Orlowski managed to finish in the fifth spot, but Quelo would have his worst finish in two wheel drive, 25th place. Kyle McBride, with 10th and 4th place finishes from rounds one and two respectively, isn't having the run that he would like or needs at this stage. Matthew. 11th place here under the lights would drop Kyle back several positions. Needs one more and one more and he'll be in a guaranteed A main. So he's got two more runs to go after this to bank it in the A. Um, fairly confident, Kyle's looking good. So. Jared and Ty, who are currently on the outside looking in, 
close the gap between themselves and McBride. In fact, Thibaut is leading his first laps here in China and is on his way to a top three finish. Car felt really, really good. I was driving nervous, so I think there's there's more pace there. And uh, man, it would have been a one if I would have had a good last lap. But Ty, who desperately needs a top ten run, would fall short. My car was really good in the warm up, so I was excited. I ran around. As Kind of saw I was gaining a little bit the first few laps, but then I hit a pipe, just stupid. I don't know, it's still hard to see. The white body helped, but it's still difficult out there. Um, and then I was going around again. I think it was in fourth or third or something like that, and then just ran into traffic, which pretty much ended it there, and then I made some bubbles after that. But It was just discouraging, but at least we know the car is decent. So um, tomorrow's another day, two more qualifiers. We still have a chance to get to the front. I think as long as we're within, I think top five, I think we have a really good chance because everyone's crashing and it's a matter of getting around the track. Tessman, now qualified in the middle of the B group, is heading in the wrong direction. He needs at least one podium finish tomorrow to secure a spot in the A mains. Even if he manages to turn his fortunes around, the best that Ty could hope for would be a mid-pack A starting spot. Ryan Mayfield would be the third different TQ, with Lee Martin just four tenths behind him in second. If anybody else is driving the way I just drove, it is on pins and needles, to say the least. I mean, it's so difficult to see with the dark pipe, the dark track, and the changing track conditions. There's, there's not, there's like super loose patches, and then there's like super grippy patches, and it's just super, it's unreal. It's unreal to describe it. It kept me in the game. While Ryan and Lee have secured their spots in the finals and Tebow feels he's back in the game, the pressure will be on McBride and Tessman. Odds are that only one of them will make it into the two-wheel drive final. forwarding to our sixth day in China. It was time for some four-wheel drive qualifying action. Even though the track was groomed, the jumps were fixed, and the holes were patched, the added speed of the four-wheel drive buggies really showcased how bumpy the surface really was. I think it's going to be easier in some sections, but very diff more difficult, much more difficult in others. Especially the jump section is going to be I really don't know what's going to happen yet. I'm going to watch the, the heats up, up to mine and see. Put, the, put my worst wing on and then try it out. Ty is referring to the direction change that occurred yesterday. If Mar mandates that the track be changed a certain amount between wow. events, the easy way to do this is to run the track backwards. As usual, the drivers are fired up. <laughs> we do a lot of fired up around here. I think the jumps might be even a little bit harder, but we don't know yet until we go around, so uh, we'll find out soon. Yeah, I'll, I'll see it pretty tough to, to jump the second one, but uh, yeah, it's four-wheel drive, you have more power, so I guess we'll have to wait and see what the cars does when they get out there. But uh, the, Some of the center section looks like it's actually going to be more fun, so... Basically the same difficulties we had before, they're just going to be the same difficulties, only going the opposite direction with a couple new ones that maybe people don't anticipate. Things are unknown now. I mean, uh, the double, I don't, how much lift does it have? I mean, we're going to put two marshals over in the, the gap there between the double-double because -double that's going to be the danger spot, I think. Qualifying here starts out quite differently than two-wheel drive in that the weather was perfect and the scheduled six rounds of qualifying start on time. Four of these rounds would be run today with the final two run on the last day of the event. The track has also received a fresh batch of molasses, and the holes have all been patched and resealed. The question is, how would the track be, and would the list of TQs be as diverse as it was in two-wheel drive? This first round would give a few drivers who struggled in the two-wheel drive segment a chance to shine. Two, three, four. 
Spencer, who is all but invisible in two-wheel drive, was currently leading Ty Tessman. Dustin Evans, who struggled immensely in two-wheel drive, was battling near the top. On track, Ty looked a lot more confident. He was pushing hard and has closed the gap between himself and race leader Rivkin. But Tessman gets caught trying to race Rivkin instead of racing the track. Yeah, I mean, geez, I really didn't have that much confidence going in uh, because you know, we've been changing the car almost every run, but now I'm just going to leave it and just focus on some uh, driving errors that I can make better and just go from there. Ty, who has changed up his driving style since practice, puts in a safe first run. Yeah, I came in a little bit slower and then tried to use power and to preload the suspension to make it through the rest, not hit him so fast to try to make the car go higher. When you're going this fast on this track, these tires are so inconsistent that it's just very hard to make it the same line every time. Um, but happy with how the car is. We're still going to make a little bit of a change to try to get it to land better and be more stable at high speed. But happy with the first run, even though it's just the fifth, it's still it's a safe, safe run, I think. Lee Martin, who is overnight TQ in the two-wheel drive event, isn't faring quite as well here in four-wheel drive. He's barely holding on to an A main spot. Like the car feels a bit numb and then it starts sliding and you don't really know where the biting point is. Good job. Yep, keep trying. While Lee is struggling, his teammate Ryan Mayfield is currently leading round two. That was until his final lap. It got a little cloudy at the end. I just like couldn't see the jump faces for some reason. They're like a weird polarized cheap sunglass. So I don't know. That probably wasn't it, but I like making excuses. <laughs> I probably just got nervous and started donkey flipping. So, but I'm I'm cool with you know a couple good runs, a couple twos to start it. You know I was better than how I started two wheel drive. So at least I have some comfort kind of moving into the next few rounds, which is nice. Defending champion Bruno Coelho, who was as high as second place in this round has settled into a fifth place groove. Bruno has tucked in behind his teammate in hopes of the faster Tessman upping his pace. He in front of me. He made a mistake and got behind me, which is for some reason we've been together a lot on the track this weekend. Um, so he followed me around a while. I made a little gap and lost a bit of gap, uh, but he was being really helpful behind me, not to pressure me too much and let me get going again. I made a little bit of a bobble once or twice, but other than that, it was clean. My car was easy to drive. I think as easy as you can expect it to be on this track. Even though his car was easy to drive, Tessman was also very fast. His 24.3 second lap was only bested by one other driver, his former teammate, David Ronafal. But David lacked the consistency this round to take over the top spot. Tessman would earn his very first TQ, but would it be his last at these worlds? Same setup, pretty much. Nothing changed to make the tires wear out less. Sure. While the track conditions in round two and three were virtually identical, the tire wear was significantly less. Could tire consistency, or lack thereof, play a part in determining the world champion tomorrow? You know you're doing good when Red RC comes to interview you. Um, so that's been, we, I had that both runs today, so feeling pretty confident for the last one. Yeah. Red RC is the only media outlet here? Well, there's some goofball with a camera walking around, but other than that, yeah. Gordon Ty had their confidence back, and seeing three of his cars in the top 10 made Uri, who is crazy about winning, very happy. Evans, who was struggling to stay in the hunt for a spot in the two-wheel drive final, started out fine in four-wheel, but he has dropped off here in the second round. With 25 second laps, Dustin will be hard-pressed to make it into the final. Will he be able to turn it around? As it was in two-wheel drive, there is another heated battle shaping up for the final A-main spot. This time, four drivers were involved. Evans, Tebow, McBride, and Martin were all within two points of each other. Kyle puts in two top tens in the first two rounds, and with 17 points, he leads out of the other three drivers. 
Yeah, it was a good start at least. Um, my car was easy to drive. I probably just want to find a little more, a little more speed for the corners, some of the slow sections like the chicane. But yeah, I'm happy to get the top ten. But with four rounds remaining. Absolutely anything could still happen. Back in the E group, Zeke, hoping for a better qualifying day than in the two-wheel drive event, was sorely disappointed. Fortunately, his struggles are with driving as opposed to setup, which can be a bit easier to fix. A lot of time on the right side, up on the tabletop. I'm either going too fast and kind of jumping and then like getting up on two or uh, going a little too slow and uh, just losing a lot of time. So I'm probably leaving, you know, half a second a lap out there just on little tiny bobbles from trying too hard in some places and not trying hard enough in another. With the setting sun, the hopes for at least one of the four drivers on the bubble are also faded. I have the speed and feel like the car to be definitely to run up top five and stuff like that. I just got to clean up my driving. I mean, it's hard. Everyone out there is crashing. So, I mean, I definitely got the pace now where I was lacking in, in practice. I just got to put it together in racing. In the top heat, Tessman was struggling to generate grip. My car was really good at the start. It's been the easiest it's been to drive all event. Um, and then I just kind of, I drove it probably to its maximum when it was good. And then the tires, they do fall off at the end and it just kind of caught me off guard and I just pushed a little too hard. Behind Ty on the track, but ahead on the clock, was the battle for the lead. Mayfield would crash out, handing Ronald Falk the top spot. His much improved consistency seems to have locked him in for a TQ. But David was not the fastest driver on the track and with four laps left, Quelo inherits the lead, and even with this ugly final lap, he manages to hold on. Bruno drove a really clean, fast race, and that's what's getting you TQ, and that's what's gonna win, I think, is someone who can just stay smooth and consistent throughout the whole race. This will be the third different TQ in as many rounds, and it will be Bruno's first of the event. The first three qualifier, like three different guys TQ'd, so you see it's very close. Bruno very fast, then David, Ty, Mayfield, they're all at the same speed. Qualifying is half done, and Tessman has not finished outside the top five. This gives him some breathing room to push a bit harder in the last round of the day. As the round ends, and the sun begins to set. Cloud cover slowly begins to roll in. More rain is now in the forecast for tomorrow. So the morning, little rain, that's it. I believe it. All I know is, what I can know is today we're running four qualifiers. That's it, that's all I know. So, I don't know, we'll see. I'm terribly worried for Saturday that tomorrow is going to be rain. As round four starts, a sense of urgency grips the top drivers. This could be the last round of four-wheel drive qualifying. Bravo four, Mayfield, you're later. With seven points, the current TQ is Ryan Mayfield. Just two points behind him are both Tessman and Ronafal. Catching him, I could see on the track where he was approximately, and I was trying to make up time and push a little too hard. I just kind of squid it out on my own. Um, I, did, it, I think it happened pretty much at the exact same time, so it's not like he crashed and I got excited and then flipped my car, but I just had a little bit of a squid out moment. And still got second, which I'm happy with for having a crash. Tessman and Mayfield would swap the lead until Ryan broke an arm. Ty would make a few mistakes, and David Ronafalk would inherit the race lead. David would close in quickly on Cav, but with no call from race control, Ryan would hold his lines. A mistake would collect Ronafalk. He would still TQ, but this would put him into a tie with Tessman. I thought he was going to let me by there, because uh, there was still half a lap to go. 
Unfortunately, that wasn't the case, and, and uh, he made a mistake on his own. Um, I, I got tangled in his rear wing. You know what? That's what it is. I mean, I'm trying to go around the track too, so you know, I made two mistakes in the same lap. Stuff a pipe that I haven't really, you know, hit. So it was going to be his final lap. I had one more lap. So I really wasn't like concerned that I was going to really collect him. I just made a mistake. As fate would have it, the tiebreaker was won by Ty, and he was the overnight TQ. My car was good again. The tires were as good as they can expect. And yeah, just everything's going good. Hopefully it doesn't rain. If it does, we're prepared. The crew once again tucks the track in for the night. News of worsening weather spreads through the pits. With no spare day built into the four-wheel drive event of the IFMAR Worlds, we cannot help but wonder if Ty might have just won his second IFMAR title. Well, that's all my emergency food from Japan. All the cans, chickens, fish, uh, tuna, some other fish, some like uh, seaweed soup. <laughs> Sorry, what? I'm just trying to steer clear of anything that looks suspicious, but honestly, it all looks suspicious. I think next time I need to bring the tuna from home. I haven't gotten sick on anything, so that's that's good news. Uh, food's not been too bad. We've had some pretty good food in the hotel. We had chicken teriyaki, that was nice. Um, everyone liked that, so that was good. Uh, during the day, yeah, it's been a little bit of a struggle. More for snacks. Like if I'm a little bit hungry and I want to go and get a snack, I really have no options. So um, yeah, I just sit here being hungry. The Japanese guy brought some fruit with them, which is probably a clever idea. Maybe I can eat him, actually. Not in that way. I'd like to be a little bit more adventurous, but um, can't really afford to be sick. So yeah, I keep it pretty straightforward. Uh, I'm okay with it. I brought a lot of stuff myself back from home and I'm good with it. Teriyaki chicken last night at the hotel was right on point. I liked it too. But I'm getting by. It's not the end of the world. I'm in a new world. Gotta enjoy it, right? We have to understand that we are English speaking people in a Chinese country. I don't think it's their responsibility to learn our language. We should be learning to function in their society. And I think they're trying hard, and that's about all they can do. I mean, it's tough sometimes, but there's a big communication gap. But we have to remember we're the visitors, not them. At our hotel, it's good. It just takes a little bit longer than I'd like. While it was less of an issue on day four, the final day of two-wheel drive, by the time the last day of four-wheel drive came around, everyone was starting to get really hungry. Each morning, participants filled up, many eating a larger breakfast than normal in hopes that the meal would last well into the day. Another shuttle trip to the track for the last day of both events. While some of the participants are hungry for food, others are hungry for wins. Jared, Kyle, and Ty would all be looking for big things to happen today. It would not be easy. Okay, so I'm gonna show you some stuff about what we're dealing with on the track here. Um, it's not as critical midday, but at night and in the morning, the moisture kind of comes up. Um, this is just an example here. Where it's wet, you can see the color difference. It's just slime. So your car comes across and you try to turn in this corner, nothing happens until you hit the dry spot with your front tires. Then your rear tires are still on there and it just busts loose. Um, that's basically what last night was like. You just there, were, you could see the wet spots, but you had to drive through them because they were just all the way across the line. You just had to be careful. Um, hopefully, it dries up for the first round. Uh, I think we're up very soon uh, in the first round, so we'll try to deal with it as best we can. But it's just this track is just so tough, and then stuff like this makes it even tougher. To add an extra layer of complexity to an already trying world championship, the track wasn't behaving like a typical sugared track. Somehow. It was losing grip, not gaining it. And it was deteriorating badly. Wrong. We're trying to figure it out. It's not good. It's not generating grip. We kind of had everything work towards high grip, and then we kind of got lost. 
I think we just have to go right back to the starting board and figure something out. The track was slowly working its way out of the grasp of the X-ray drivers, who have not been able to adapt their cars to the lower grip conditions. Adversely, the track was becoming more and more favorable to the Yokomo team, who had been working hard on their low grip setups. The Yokomo teammates would finish 1-2, Lee Martin would be second, and Ryan Mayfield would be the event's first repeat TQ. Yeah, I'm pretty happy, you know, second on the grid. If you would have, I would have took that before I come, so I'm pretty happy with that. Um, so close to being TQ is a little bit gutting at times, but I'm happy. I've always kind of been mid-pack, to be honest. You know, just like middle to A. To make A final is, you know, your first step. Done that, that's cool. Another A final, wicked. To be, you know, top three on the grid, awesome. Um, so yeah. Yeah, just gotta go out there and try and do my thing. It would be Mayfield earning the overall TQ and starting on pole for the AAA mains starting later on today. Yeah, I mean, I haven't won a Worlds at all, so I mean, anytime I'm, luckily I've, I've claimed to all my World Championships, I've been competitive, and um, you know, I've, I've started on a pole a couple times and it hasn't ever worked out, and uh, definitely start on a pole is cool, uh, we'll see what happens, like I said, this is definitely, if it goes good, it's not going to be easy yet by, by any stretch, it's, it's very difficult out there, so, um, but I think, I, you know, I have a good shot, I just got to keep it on all fours. Keep cool, keep mentally cool, and uh, hopefully we can uh, walk away here with a good day. For the drivers on the bubble, things were starting to change up a bit. Jared, who was in a similar position to Ty, Dustin, and Kyle yesterday, has done exactly what he needed to do so far today. You know, I, uh, I wanted a little bit more that time, just messed up one time in the rhythm. I ran super consistent. I had one thirty second lap, and... Um, you know, dropped me back some, but a six is better than my 16. So, uh, yeah, we're, we're moving in the right direction. Track, track's changing still. I think that was the loosest it's probably been. So, um, yeah, ready to uh, get the last round and hopefully have a good one so I can uh, secure a spot. With Jared securing his spot in the show, it was down to Kyle and Ty battling for the last available spot in the main. In the next five minutes, the 10 driver grid will be decided. A sometimes thing. It's an all the time thing. Winning is a habit. Unfortunately, losing can be also. And that's not a habit that any of these drivers want to get into. With the countless hours of preparation, it seems so unfair that in only 25 minutes of qualifying, so many talented drivers were completely eliminated from title contention. Uh, but it's somewhere in the B. Um, it's disappointing, but for some reason my car has lost all of its forward drive and rear grip. Um, we don't really know what happened. I think we just got lost in the setup. Kind of just steered away when we had high grip and then just fell away slowly and slowly. 
It sucks, but we'll try to make some changes and go back to what we started with for a loose grip. Um, or what we know works good on this trip, like the complete setup, and we'll see how that works with the B-Main. Yeah, extremely disappointed. I mean, I come here feeling like I have a, a chance to battle on the top five, you know, get up on the podium or something, and have a good car yesterday, make some mistakes, cost me a lot of points, and then today I, I just really struggled, and the track changed some, and I just wasn't comfortable, and drove bad, and didn't make the main. It's, while disappointment was evident with Tessman and Evans, McBride was stoked to make his first ever two-wheel drive main event. It's my first uh, two-wheel drive A main, so yeah, pretty excited. I didn't think I was going to get in, but um, we slipped in, so pretty happy, pretty happy. Like two-wheel drive, two final rounds of qualifying will be run on this morning, the eighth day of these worlds. At least, that's the plan. More rain arrives halfway through the fifth round of qualifying. As a result, the last two rounds of qualifying are canceled, and the final grid is set. Kyle McBride, who is the beneficiary of the tiebreak in two-wheel drive, would be on the losing end here in the four-wheel drive event. Dustin Evans would edge him out for the 10th and final spot. I'm feeling pretty angry because I just missed out in the final because they dropped that last round. So. Pretty, pretty shitty, kind of disappointed, but I guess that's what happens when it rains and you're gonna have better qualifiers early, so it is what it is. While he's seen success at the last six Nitro Worlds, Ty Tessman has yet to make a two-wheel drive A main at a 10 scale Worlds. I'm gonna respect that room. Still racing hardcore with a minute 10 to go. Like the Chico Worlds, Ty would win the B main. His time would have been enough for top five finishes in all three of the AAA mains. We gotta start making more risky moves earlier, I think. We gotta be not trying to. See. Basically, we're just too safe this time. We didn't want to change too much, and we're chicken, I guess, to change the right things. But this happened at Chico, too, so I hope we learned our lesson this time. In the full drive B main, even though Jared Tebow would start from pole, he would not lead a single lap of the race. Lee Martin would take over top spot in the opening seconds and he would lead the entire race. So I got screwed by the Q5 uh, cancellation. Um, yeah, I, was, I needed a round in that one. Had three top tens, but just the scores weren't good enough. And uh, yeah, I needed that Q5. My car was actually the best it felt all week. Um, which I think I proved by, you know, just even the practice final and the final. My car was really good, Ryan's was really good. We worked hard on the setup and I think we really got there in the end. And, um, good in two wheel, four wheel drive didn't really gel to the track like I did with two wheel. And um, yeah, I wasn't really feeling it to begin with. And then, yeah, just didn't really get the job done early enough. And you know, the rain came and it kind of screwed me up. We're at 30 seconds to go, 30 to go. As the B main winds down, Jared would fall out of the top three and finish in the sixth spot. 
Jared and I have worked together for nine years. I've had a ton of success. You know, we're good friends. Um, I don't know as, if, as far as what his, you know, thoughts were past 2018. You know, he's, you know, he's mentioned the thought of you know, maybe, maybe retiring, something like that. So I kind of had to keep that in the back of my mind. Like, you know, if he's going to retire at the end of next year. Would this be the last time we see Jared Tebow competing as a professional at a 10 scale Worlds? Or would his totem keep spinning just long enough for us to see him in France in two years? On the tone. Here we go, off and rolling. Not nearly as high as he had hoped, but still more than halfway up the grid, Zeke would qualify for both the two and four wheel drive E mains. It was all right. It started raining pretty hard in the in the middle and kind of went went to crap around there. So um, I don't know if I just have wheel spin um, or I'm starting to lose drive or something, but. It, uh, it definitely got louder. Maybe I jumped a spur here or something, but either way, uh, it was fun. And uh, hopefully, I was happy it didn't rain any harder than what it did because it gets really slick out there. With Tessman failing to qualify for the two-wheel drive final, he helps prep Bruno's buggy. Trying to help Bruno get his car set up for what we ran in the US. Track change a massive amount, so it's a lot lower grip, so we're gonna give it a try and see how she works. Ty would, however, start on pole for four-wheel drive, but with only one TQ, he would not be the favorite to win. I don't know, I think Mayfield has a shot of being both two-wheel and four-wheel, and Ty and David are there too, so it would be a nice race to watch. I mean, I wish I could be there also to play, but it's gonna be tight. I have no idea. It's a lot of good dudes. Man. Anybody can win. Five minutes is a long time on this grueling track. I think it looks like about five guys that are right there at the top. That it's a toss-up. Anything could happen on this on this layout. So we'll see. Ron Felk's looking okay. Fast. Okay. It's gonna be Ron Felk. I think he's gonna gonna do it. I got a feeling. Uh, Ron Felk, Tessman, Bruno, Mayfield. I don't know number five. There's not. There's a wild card in there somewhere. In both mains, could the wild cards be the drivers that snuck into the show? Or would the top qualifiers lead from tone to tone? This would please Mayfield, who is hungry for his first Worlds, and Tessman, who would welcome his second. Unlike Nitro races, where a final like this one would be 60 minutes long, here in China, the best two out of three five-minute races would decide the winner. The tension was building. Well, for the most part. The drivers roll out and do a single warm-up lap before they are staged. While Mayfield will start from the front in two-wheel drive, he starts fourth in four-wheel drive buggy. Tessman will start from the front with his former teammate, Ronald Falk, behind him. Both A1 starts are thrilling. The racing is high paced right from the start. In full drive, Tessman and Ronafalk have separated themselves from the pack slightly. In two wheel drive, Mayfield was putting on a clinic. Contrary to what Scotty said would happen, Ryan was checking out. But could he hold this massive lead? Or would the antagonistic nature of the track or even the weather factor into this story. After a few small errors, Tessman's lead has vanished. Mayfield has closed the gap. To add insult to injury, the wind catches Ty's car in the ever so crucial double section. Mayfield would capitalize. In two-wheel drive, Ryan Mayfield is only 90 seconds away from his first win. 
Lee Martin has a bit of a battle on his hands, but looks poised to finish in the second spot. With the smallest of mistakes, Cavalieri closes in on Martin. Only moments later, Mayfield was upside down in the doubles. Would there be enough time for Lee to catch him? Ryan would narrowly hang on to claim the A1 victory. In four-wheel drive, he was still clinging to a precarious lead over Tessman, but there is absolutely zero margin for error. Again, the wind pushes Ty's car across the lane. This error would prove very costly as he would require a marshal. Mayfield has now won both A1s. Victories in A2 would end his Ifmar drought. It was nice, the car's nice to drive. Um, somewhere along the line, you know, working with these guys, uh, the car got really, really easy. It's not easy, but it's predictable and it's, it's doing all the stuff it needs to do, so. And like I keep saying, it's like every single time we get out there, it's a little harder, you know, the, the tracks losing traction. Uh, kind of going up to the jumps, it's like getting polished or something. So, um, yeah, lucky to have a. I was, I was really nice to get that done. Um, see what happens next one. Two mains still need to be run, and none of the competitors have been eliminated yet. My car was good. Um, just drove around trying not to crash, trying to push too hard, and then through the jump sections twice. I just, I think it, my car caught the wind and then I landed kind of crooked and tried to judge for as good as I could to try to go straight and it just jumped in the infield twice. Given that the wind looks like it's here to stay, Ty preps a new low downforce wing. Yeah, I've trimmed down the wicker on the back, um, probably six or seven millimeters taken off. Uh, I just try to cut through the wind a little better, try to, try to catch as little of the wind as possible. Hopefully it's better and hopefully it doesn't change the rest of the track for me. Things are not looking good for Ty in four-wheel drive. David Ronafalk makes a statement early and takes over the lead. The question is, can David lead better than Ty can chase? An early opportunity was squandered. Mayfield passes Ty and closes in on Ronafalk. The order remained unchanged for the final two minutes. In desperate need of collecting more points than Ryan, Ty tries a desperate move. He just can't quite stick the landing. While still mathematically possible, this puts Ty in a terrible spot from a points perspective. He's not the only one disappointed in how things have played out in four-wheel drive. Yeah, for me, I think it was very disappointed and unfair world for me. I worked a lot for these worlds and, um, you know, nothing come as I expect, you know. And, uh, With nearly double the points accumulated in this round alone than any of the top three have total, there would be no chance for incumbent champion Bruno Coelho to repeat. Dustin Evans has also not moved up in the field. And to come here and be pretty average and never feel comfortable is pretty disappointing. All the momentum appeared to be going in Ronald Falk's direction. He was only one point behind Ryan Mayfield, and in the case of a tie break, David has the fastest run in his back pocket. The final leg of four-wheel drive will determine who the world champion will be. Would Ty manage to duplicate his only 10 scale IFMAR success, or would disappointment be his cruel mistress yet again? Back in the second leg of two-wheel drive, Cavalieri was consistently doing the double jump section. Mayfield was not. At the start of this race, he managed to pass Mayfield, but just couldn't quite make it stick. With time running out, he was set to try the pass again. 
as before, he just can't quite close in enough to make the pass. It is now just a few comments and a step up and down. Up the hill, down the hill, they go to the crisscross. 2.35 to go. We are now halfway there. Two and a half down, two and a half to go. Amen. Cavalieri makes a costly mistake that just might have handed the world championship to Mayfield. Behind this battle for the lead, Lee Martin found himself in the sixth spot. Oh yeah, I'm just gutted because my car was really good. And uh, yeah, I just touched the pipe. Just literally touched it and then made another mistake when I was in the, the pack. Went to dead last and uh, almost got up to the top three. Double it on to the straightaway. Across the stripe he goes. Only 90 seconds stand between Ryan and his first ever IFMAR title. Would his luck hold? The third and final leg of the full drive final is about to be run. A pretty good start here. Tessman quickly builds a small gap, but a crash in the triples hands the lead over to David. Three laps in, the order is unchanged. David's luck would not hold. He would drop out of the lead and would end up in the sixth spot. Ty would briefly hold on to the lead again. Just after landing the triple jump, it almost looks like Ryan gets loose all on his own and collects Tessman. Rather than have the ref make their first call of the week, Ty pulls off and waits. With virtually non-existent title hopes, things are even worse for Ty. He isn't even in a podium spot. Ryan's buggy isn't quite as good as Spencer's, or even Ty's in the double section. Tessman completes the pass and sets his sights on Rivkin and a podium finish. Lap after lap, Ty is proving that his is the buggy to beat in this final race. But lap after lap, he is unable to move to the front. Time is running out. He sees the smallest of gaps between Rivkin's buggy and the pipe, but he cuts too sharp and ends up in the grass. Ty's slim title hopes are officially over. Spencer would hold on to take the win. With Mayfield finishing in the second spot, he locks up the four-wheel drive title. Back in the two-wheel drive class, positions are rapidly being decided. Cavallari, who would not recover from his air at A2, was having a strong run here in A3. He would finish second overall. Gave it all I had. We had a really good race with me and Mayfield uh, the first few, uh, few minutes. I just kind of Turned in a little shy of the corner and had to turn around. I lost a little, my momentum and a little bit of time, so I really didn't get back in the groove after that. And uh, you know, ended up a second. So. I sucked then, but still third overall podium. I'm happy. I would have took a podium before I arrived for sure. So uh, yeah, I didn't quite make second. I drove like rubbish then, but I'm happy with yeah. third. With two strong mains, Ronald Falk would finish second in four-wheel drive. I feel like I, I missed a little bit of experience when the track was changing. Uh, didn't really know what to do with the car. Of course, I, I, I had the stuff that I wanted to try, but like in Tesco, it's so precise and it's so intense that you really won't need to know exactly what you're doing out there. So uh, I'm happy taking second in four-wheel drive. Uh, so yeah, I'm excited to to keep going for here, I'm, I'm not gonna put my head down. I'm, I'm just gonna, yeah, keep it straight up. Look forward to the next race, and uh, I'll be back next year at the Worlds in, in Australia trying to defend my ACL title. Ryan Mayfield, who wrapped up two-wheel drive after hanging on in A2 and has just won four-wheel drive in A3, now joins a very exclusive list of drivers who have doubled up at the Worlds. It's the world champion title. Tell us what's going through your mind right now. Pretty unreal, man. I've watched a lot of people win these things over the years, and um, I knew I had the, the talent and the capabilities, and 
I've always had the support and uh, honestly proudest moment uh, before this was just watching Spencer win his and um, now that we can share this that's awesome so no one is more surprised at winning both events here this week than Ryan crossing the finish line I didn't really know what the hell just happened you know it was just like wow this worked out it worked out way too well you know it's I've had these things you know such stupid reasons me not winning the worlds and and today it seemed like everything just fell into place this week everything fell into place somehow and uh, I think it's just the team effort you know we worked really hard and uh, we all we all worked for the same goal we were here to win no matter who was driving the car as long as the car won and <laughs> that's what happened Ryan's if more drought is officially over. In Ryan's wake, a slew of disappointed drivers and teams. Ty came into these worlds with high hopes. He is leaving them empty handed and feeling numb. Congratulations to Ryan, like he drove amazing both classes, he deserved to win. Uh, happy for him to get two, two world championships this weekend. Um, yeah, just being able to TQ and not even top three, it just kind of sucks, but yeah, it is what it is. Um, his car was way better than everybody else's in that last one, I think. He pushed him around in the infield. It just wasn't meant to be. It's another world championship we didn't get. We'll come back for the next one, try to get the next one. Ty and many of the other drivers won't have to wait long for another Worlds. Next year at this time, we will be in Kyle McBride's home country of Australia for the eight scale worlds. <laughs> no, overall, it's been you know a pretty good experience. So it's my second world, so I was happy to make the tour drive I main. I was stoked with that. Uh, pretty disappointed for the four world not making it in, but yeah, you know I didn't have the best qualifying start, so that was kind of my fault. But yeah, I learned a lot. And, and uh, it was pretty awesome driving on a you know a big track for 10 scale cars. It was something different, but um, yeah, overall this place is pretty pretty awesome. But um, personally, I'm going to get back some nitro. In only eight days, Ryan has joined 10 other drivers who have won two IFMAR titles. However, it seems unlikely that he or any other driver will ever match what Masami Hirasaka has accomplished in this sport. Oh, uh, 14 times and 18 years consecutive world champion. Wow. While Ryan has some time left in his career to win a few more IFMAR titles, this would be Dallas Matheson's final off-road world championship. On January 13th, 2018, Dallas, while visiting family in the UK, would pass away peacefully with his daughter by his side. You were an icon. You were respected. You will be missed. Rest in peace. While these worlds didn't start off well for Ryan, they couldn't have possibly ended better for him. But not at any point was he in this alone. My death is work like whole week, and then my, I have good traction in my car, so I just put the, take out my death to put on his car, and he win. So actually my death is winning for the world. <laughs> Even though the awards in the sport of RC are for individuals, behind the scenes, it is truly a team sport. It is a reality of life that we are a competitive species, and the most competitive sports, no matter how big or small, draw the most competitive people. That's why racers from 24 countries were in Xiaomin, China, to compete and to win, virtually at all costs. Sometimes the price to be paid is a heavy one. Ty and Gord have been away from home for over a month now. It's, uh, it's been a long time and it's going to feel nice to go home. Um, go back home, think some stuff through, and get ready for the Reedy Race. Even though World Championships are synonymous with disappointment, 
many of these drivers will have a chance at redemption in less than a year from now at the 8 scale Worlds. This sport truly is a cyclical one. The cycle begins anew in a few short months. This week has been amazing. Today was especially very surprising to me. And um, you know, I ran for a lot of you, you know, a few great companies that have really uh, made me who I am. And um, working with Yokomo has really been great. And we've done a lot together, obviously. And uh, thank you, Jason Rona, he has, he's not here, um, but he's been a big part. And uh, everybody here are my peers, and I have a great time racing everybody. And uh, I want to thank everybody for all the experiences and all the, you know, the great memories. And, uh, now that's it. Thank you.